San Francisco's fentanyl epidemic continues to devastate the city. Yeah, and we want to focus on why law enforcement says it's so difficult to convict drug dealers and who's ultimately responsible for allowing them to go back on the streets. ABC 7 News reporter Leanne Melendez joins us now. And Leanne, you looked into this. What'd you find? Well, I found that usually people like to point the finger or blame just one person for a drug crisis here. But as we all know, when it comes to drug dealers and enforcing the law in San Francisco, uh, to quote a colleague of mine, we're all in this together, meaning it's not just City Hall, it's also San Francisco's legal system, it's Sacramento and lawmakers who are not willing to properly address the fentanyl crisis. And finally, back to San Francisco, it's the jury pool. It takes more than just police and its supporting cast to make a dent in San Francisco's drug trade. The role played by judges inside the Superior Court is now coming under scrutiny by City Hall and the District Attorney. Even though we've been advocating for repeat offenders to stay in, they're still being released. Violent and repeat offenders. DA Brooke Jenkins took office nearly 15 months ago and only last week was her office for the first time able to convict a drug dealer who claimed that he was a victim of human trafficking and forced to sell drugs. For fear of his safety as well as others uh, and the jury was not persuaded by his story um, and did find him guilty. 20 year old Eduardo Rosales Silva had been arrested in May 2022 for possession to sell cocaine, fentanyl and meth but was released by a judge. Less than a month later, he was arrested a second time for selling drugs and again was released by the court. He was arrested two more times and finally kept in jail after the fourth arrest. He will be sentenced on October 6th. According to Jenkins, so far this year, there were 511 individuals with open bench warrants who failed to appear in court after they were released by the judge. We wanted to get some context and asked if this kind of leniency is followed in other Bay Area counties. I mean, if somebody has no record whatsoever uh, and they've got a stable address and the like, most of the time they may not be kept in custody. But if there's a second time, not three or four, a second time, uh, they're going to occupy the San Mateo County Jail. But before San Francisco's DA was able to convict Rosales Silva, three similar drug dealing cases resulted in a hung jury. It may not come as a surprise that San Francisco jurors tend to be more liberal and sympathetic. In a recent newspaper editorial, someone who served on a jury explained why they decided to vote to acquit a drug dealer from Honduras. Quote, I believe the evidence showed that the accused, who I'll call Esteban, to protect his identity, was coerced into selling drugs against his will. I hope that he will now have the opportunity to rebuild his life and separate himself from the coercion and violence that have gotten him here. A few months ago, I went to the Tenderloin to ask those who weren't using drugs in Spanish if it was true that some drug dealers were being coerced and threatened. They chose not to answer. Last May, a survey of 500 potential San Francisco voters conducted by EMC Research found that 70% of them said sanctuary city policies should not be extended to those undocumented people selling drugs. Supervisor Hillary Ronan. I think that this is a distraction. I don't think that uh, low-level drug dealers from, but it's Honduras, it's not low from, Hon from Honduras are the real cause of this drug crisis. Instead, Ronan blamed the makers of Oxycontin for the current opioid crisis in San Francisco. But shouldn't we and do something about it now, though? What, combined, shouldn't we do something about that, it now? A hundred percent. And that okay. combined with poverty is what led to the crisis in the streets today, not immigrants. Still, even the former Speaker of the House had to concede that one way out of this crisis was to bring in the Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA. Nancy Pelosi writing to Attorney General Merrick Garland. People are dying from fentanyl and violence. We hope to hear soon about a designation of Operation Overdrive for San Francisco to combat the cartels. We've got critics who are hand ringers and navel gazers and defenders of the status quo without even having the courage to admit that they're defending the status quo. We need to try new approaches. So we turned to Sacramento to see if the state is taking harsher action and found that lawmakers there are still taking a lukewarm approach to the fentanyl crisis. For example, three bills introduced in the California legislature did not advance.
AB 367 to add sentencing enhancement for those who seriously injure or kill through fentanyl poisoning? Rejected. AB 955 to increase penalties for dealers who sell fentanyl over social media? Rejected. AB 1058 to increase penalties for those possessing a large amount of fentanyl? Also rejected. Prosecutors worry what will happen if courts aren't given the tools to convict drug dealers. In the 1980s and 90s, the crack cocaine epidemic led to harsh sentences, mainly against African Americans. But in 2014, California voters passed Proposition 47, making simple drug possession for first-time users a misdemeanor rather than a felony. That eliminated jail sentences and made offenders eligible for drug diversion programs. They have adopted an approach that... No, to do that will shove us back into the 1990s. That is their attitude. That attitude to me is a sorely mistaken attitude that is costing human lives. And there is a difference here, right? According to the CDC, more than 150 people die every day from overdoses related to fentanyl in the United States. With crack cocaine in the 80s and 90s, the causes of death among those who either used or sold it, sold it were homicides and remember AIDS. Yeah. Leanne, so different. Yes, and you kind of mentioned this in your story, um, you know, what wasn't done in Sacramento, but is there anything coming down the pipeline in Sacramento that could help in dealing with the fentanyl crisis? Well, there were some things that were proposed and passed. For example, uh, I just have a moment right here, for example, expanding treatment for addicts. Also, having schools have a plan, an emergency plan in case of overdoses, mm -hmm. and also more access to um, uh, also uh, Narcan, for example. Mm. And all of those are wonderful, great, yeah. you know. But when it comes to dealing with the drug dealers yeah. from Sacramento, those don't crickets. Like yeah. Crickets. Yeah. Leanne, eye opening. Yeah, yeah great it, reporting. It Thank you.